Hello everyone, this is Scyther88 back with another video. Today we'll be discussing one of the most commonly used programs in molecular biology, PIMO. Now, PIMO is a powerful tool for visualizing and manipulating protein structures. Now, this how to use video will be broken down into two parts. Part one will be about downloading and optimally displaying the protein structure of your choice. And part two will be about displaying amino acid residues of interest using the measuring tool and in silico mutagenesis. Now, we'll be using the Ebola virus as the, uh, one of the Ebola virus proteins as, a, as the example. Um, concerning the, uh, the outbreaks that started last year, this is a definitely uh, relevant virus and we'll be talking about a very relevant protein for sure. Specifically, we'll be looking at the glycoprotein here indicated by the red arrow. The glycoprotein is responsible for engaging the cell receptor and subsequent fusion with the host endosome in order to release its RNA genome into the cytoplasm. Now, uh, this uh, glycoprotein is actually a trimer, uh, showing uh, it's actually a trimeric structure, um, and it actually has two domains: the lighter blue called GP1 and the darker blue GP2. We're also going to be looking at actually antibodies that are bound to the structure. Um, indeed, the structure has um, neutralizing antibodies bound to it, specifically the FABs, which are basically composed of a light and heavy uh, light the light and heavy chains, um, but without the FC region of the antibody. So let, let's get started. We're going to go ahead and minimize this, and we're going to go to Google. So we're going to type in PDB. In Google and the first link is what we want okay so here we have the home page of the protein data bank and we're gonna go ahead and search for 3C um, SY I believe um, yes so each protein is always identified by a four uh, four character code usually one letter one number in three letters though it might not always be uh, one number and three letters, or maybe, but it's always a four letter, uh, four character code. So anyway, so here we have the, uh, the structure that we want, crystal structure of the trimeric prefusion Ebola virus glycoprotein in complex with a neutral neutralizing antibody from a human survivor. All right, so this study was published in Nature a couple years ago by a very prominent lab run by uh, Erica Sapphire at, Scripps, uh, at the Scripps Institute. Okay. And uh, we're going to go ahead and a, um, download the files. So we're going to go ahead and um, click download files, this pull down menu. And we're going to go ahead and download the text file here, PDB file text. We're going to click on that. We're going to save it. Yep. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and open it in Pymo. And what, one of the first thing I like to do is go to display and sequence. All right. We're going to maximize the window here so here we go we have the protein all right the protein structure so we can move around the protein structure by using our left mouse button we can rotate it the right mouse button we can go ahead and zoom in and zoom out zoom in and zoom out and then we can um, basically move the protein structure or transform it by holding down the middle mouse button um, to do so so left mouse button rotate right mouse button zooming and then the middle mouse just to move it around okay so this looks a bit messy so what I like to do is uh, go to the structure and we're gonna go to hide lines so the default is always gonna be displayed in lines and we're gonna instead go to press S for show as cartoon alright great this looks more streamlined already now basically all the individual um, elements are, are hidden and also like the uh, different bonds so now we see this cartoon structure showing different secondary structures. Let's make this a bit more clear. Um, we're going to go to uh, the structure here, S3CSY. Go to C for color, and we're going to color by secondary structure. Okay, this is good. So now what we see here is that the uh, alpha helices are in red, the uh, beta sheets are in, uh, are in yellow, and the loops and turns are in green. Okay, but what are we really looking at, looking at though, right? What, what's going on here? So we need to go back to the browser. So let's go, let's go ahead and do that. If we look at the molecular description here, 
we can see what these are. For example, the, the FAB um, heavy chain is made out of these four chains, okay? A, C, E, and G. Um, this here is the light. These four are the GP1, and these four are the GP2 uh, yes, domain of the Ebola glycoprotein. Now, there are a lot of other information, a lot of good information displayed here as well, but um, all this stuff here is definitely out of the scope for this uh, video. I can be, uh, I, I might dis, um, talk about this and, dis and discuss this later on, but right now we're not going to worry about that. All right. So now that we know what these are, let's try to identify them in the structure. So see these, these sequences up here, right? At the beginning of, of the sequence, it says A. So up to here, to he so this is chain A. And we know that chain A um, was, was called the heavy, um, the heavy chain of the, uh, of the FAB. So if we start highlighting it, as you can see here, we're going to start to see um, the structures being uh, highlighted in the three-dimensional uh, uh, representation. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, highlight all of this. And let's just color code this blue. So we're going to go to selection this time because we just selected those. And we're going to go to C, blue, blue. Okay, great. So now we highlighted one of the heavy chains as blue. Now basically what I'm going to do is go is go down this all, all of these chains, each chain, so B, um, here we have C here, and then you know D, all, all the way down until I, until I highlight every single chain the way they're supposed to be. Now um, basically I was just going to be highlighting them and then picking a color, highlighting them and picking a color um, based on the molecular information given in the web browser. Now I'm not going to do this on video because it's going to really take a lot of time. So I'm going to meet you guys back here once I finish highlighting everything. Okay, great. Now we're back. So here we go after I went through the whole entire structure and highlighted everything. So the blue um, are the heavy chains of the FABs. The red is the light chain. The green is the GP1, um, uh, GP1 domain. And the orange is the GP2. So now the structure definitely looks very clear, right? So here we see the tri trimeric uh, Ebola glycoprotein, the ectodomain specifically. We're missing the transmembrane domain here. And what we have here is then also the antibodies bound to the structure. We see the blue and the red, um, which represent the um, heavy and light chains, which are bound to um, the exact regions. Of course, these, because these trimers are exactly identical, these are bound to the same regions here. Um, right here at the interface between the uh, um, GP1 and GP, uh, G, GP2. Um, the structure, as you can see, also has a section here. Um, I guess it's just kind of carryover from the crystal structure or something. Um, it doesn't really matter because it's showing the same thing. But uh, let's say we don't want to see that anymore. Let's make it a bit more cleaner. What we can do is, for example, go down the chains. And let's say, so let's, let's start to get rid of the uh, GP2. So we're going to go ahead and highlight the GP2 here. All right, we're going to highlight it. And it's all indicating these purple dots. We're going to go to H for selection, under selection, and we're going to hide everything. And now it's going to disappear. Just click on the structure, and now it's gone. And basically, we can go ahead and hide all this other extraneous stuff that we don't really need because it's basically uh, looking at the same thing and, and it looks just kind of awkward. Um, so we're, I'm going to go ahead and hide the rest of the, of the antibody, uh, antibodies here and the uh, Ebola uh, protein domains that we don't really need for the structure. Um, so I'll be back right after I do that. Okay, now we're back. So now I've, I've uh, hidden basically the parts that we don't really need and now we're left with this very beautiful structure here. Um, very clean and it's very easy to tell what's going on. Again, we have the green uh, GP1, orange GP2, the red is the um, light chain and the blue is the heavy chain of the antibody. And we see exactly where it's bound to this virus protein. Now, looking at the structure, perhaps these antibodies can inhibit the virus from fusion by you know, creating a very rigid structure or sterically hindering the um, uh, a necessary conformation change that a lot of viruses need uh, for fusion. Um, you can find out more details in the publication, which I will post on the link of my description. Again, this is Erica Sapphire's work, uh, one of the most prominent uh, virus structure biologists 
um, uh, uh, yes, uh, one of the most prominent virus structure biologists in the United States. Okay, so now that we have this really nice figure, let's say we want to use it um, for a presentation or perhaps um, we want to um, use it in a publication for a figure or something. Um, like if you want to indicate something in the structure where you're working on it, for example. So um, what we first, what I like to do first is um, go to the control prompt or I mean the menu, I guess I should say, and we're going to go ahead and display the background as in white. Okay, so now the best background is changed in white. Next, we're going to go ahead and want to make a high resolution image of this structure. Mm, let's say I want to look at a very specific region. Let's say I want to look at the antibody and virus protein interface. So right over here. All right, let's say I want to zoom in on here and this is what I want to look at for, for, uh, for my presentation. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and center this. Let's, let's zoom in. All right, so this is, let's just say this is where we want to look, okay? Now, we're going to enter a very simple command in this bar here, this menu bar. And we're just going to call it ray. So we're going to enter ray, oh, sorry, ray 800, whoops, 800 comma 600. Now, what this means is that I'm going to tell the program and then my computer basically will render this image um, uh, with, uh, with the uh, width of 800 pixels and the length of 600 pixels, okay? Um, uh, basically width and height, I should say. So the first number is width, the second number is height. Now we're gonna go ahead and press enter. And, okay, there we go, perfect. And this basically took uh, 4.22 seconds, I believe. Um, so of course, this is gonna depend on how fast your computer is and how good the quality you want it to be. Um, so basically, we made this image, we rendered it, and is that this uh, is 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 at uh, 800 by 600. And now, what we can do is go ahead and save this high quality image. Go ahead and save it. Minimize. Oops, sorry, my video kind of cut out there for a second. But um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Ugh, something went wrong with my video, but okay. So we minimized, and then basically here we have the image we just saved. We can go ahead and open with Windows uh, Photo Viewer. It doesn't really matter. And boom, there we go. A really nice high quality image that you can use in your PowerPoint presentation, for example. Okay. Well, so that pretty much concludes part one of this video. Um, the very basics of Pymo. In part two, I will be talking about displaying the residues of interest, measuring distances between uh, elements, and conducting yin silico mutagenesis. Um, thank you everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe. Until next time, this is Scyther88 signing off.